Hello everybody, today I'd like to share with you my finds of the day. Now this isn't all of it, and most of the things have now been distributed to their new locations of service, but this is what I still have sitting around that hasn't found a home yet. And this is a video I really should have done over the summer, but now it's winter and lots of things have gone on. But anyway, here it is. This is my finds of the day for whatever date I end up putting in the title of the video. Anyway, there's some pretty cool things sitting here. Let's start up in the corner. This is a GE. It's a nice old vintage one. 300 watt clear incandescent bulb. You can see it's quite old. It has the old etch on it where the 300 is in a bigger font than normal. It is... Does it say the voltage on there? 120 volt. We can also see this is an older one because there's an extra filament support here that supports the filament in the middle of the filament. Very nice design and a nice brass base and a very nice heat sink. Next to that we have a very nice silver bowl ball. This is a 500 watt Sylvania 120 volt. I haven't tested this one so I don't know if it works yet but I am pretty sure it does. Uh, if it doesn't I don't really care. It's a really neat bulb. We can see uh, the nice heat shield down here, heat reflector, very nice, and a mogul base. Next to that is one I think is the coolest. This is a GE 300 watt, also has the big etch on it for the 300 like this one did over here, but same type of etch, silver bowl. It has a reducer on it, uh, this could be used with a standard mogul base, but this is a reducer to make it to a medium sized base. This isn't, this isn't just a reducer, it's you know to, on the bulb itself. And this one works, I've tested this one, works great. You can see the heat shield again, great quality, really cool. This is my first medium based vintage silver bowl bulb. I have a lot of mogul ones, I don't have any medium based ones, so that's really cool. Set that down. Up here at the top, you have a nice vintage GE bulb I got for 50 cents apparently. It does it isn't doesn't have a uh, that base on it. Actually has the bipin base. You see the etch on the top here, if it's still even legible anymore. Uh, looks like 25 watt is what it used to be. Very nice old etch, very nice old bulb. Put it back in there. Uh, I think used for exit signs. Here we have a very cool flame or fire shaped bulb, as I like to call them, because it looks more like a fire than a flame like the other ones. It's a very old G etch on it. I have not tested this bulb, so I don't know if it works or not. 15 watt, 120 volt. Very nice brass base. This is an interme intermediate base with a very nice old packaging on it. Very cool. Oh, there's some more information over here. Very nice. 10 cents. Can't go wrong. Here's a, what I think is really cool. This is my first um, non American bulb. This is a Tungs Rim 60 watt, 230 volt made in Hungary, incandescent bulb, with the uh, UK bipin base, I think it's uh, 22BY or whatever the technical term for this base is. But very cool, because you know here in the US we have the Edison screw base, where over there they have that and this as well. So this is my first bulb like this, so this is really cool. I got it for free, the guy, th this all came from the same restore by the way. And the guy just threw this in for free. Really cool. I would have paid for it, but this, I mean, for free, I you know, can't really complain either. Filament is still intact, so it would definitely work if I applied power to it. But very cool bulb. I love that. Here we have two of the same thing. They're Sylvania halogen capsule bulbs. I think they must have been a promotional item by, I think that's a power company. 75 cents, made in the USA. These are original halogen bulbs with a thick outer glass. Of course, they made them a lot thinner over time. 
This is 52 watts. They're both the exact same thing. Made to equal a 60 watt bulb. Of course, there's a halogen capsule in there. I really like the design of these. Just a interesting design with a nice brass base, by the way. Let's put that back in its box. Off to the side here, you can read some more information about it. Very neat. Down below, we have a very big ballast. Can't remember exactly what I got this for some reason. I think I think it was only five dollars. There's absolutely no price on it. But it's for short slimline bulbs. I have a couple, and uh, this one looks like it's for I think single. I don't think it's for double. Oh well, for this size it's double. I have some of those bulbs, so that's why I got this ballast. It's brand new, never used. I think it does do single or double. Or it needs double. I think it might be double. Don't re I don't really care. Just yeah, it's obviously double. Cut out lamp holder. Now, interesting thing here. If anybody knows what is a cut out lamp holder, I have some very cool dimmable ballasts. They're dimmable. It's really cool. And it says it needs a cut out lamp holder. I have no idea what that is. Uh, if anybody knows what a cut out lamp holder is, please tell me in the comments below. I have no idea. I want to get those dimmable ballasts working, but I, I don't know what that is. I want to use a regular socket, but I don't want to burn anything up. So anyway, you can see the different bulbs. That'd be cool if I found a T17. Highly unlikely though. High power factor. That's nice. Made in the USA. So let me put that guy away. And here's a little lampy. 8 watt preheat fluorescent fixture. Got your switch on the end. Somebody made the cord really short. And uh, they cut it short. It's not just coiled up in here. Here's some information on the bottom. It does work. The starter in it is very weak. Take the cover off. You can see it has a nice old GE bulb in it. Obviously the original lampy must have went bad. You can take that out too. And open this up and get a look at the inside, because why not? Here you can see the ballast. It's a Robertson transformer, pretty common. And the original lampy starter. Lamp holders. And that's where the cord comes out that somebody cut really short. They also lost the little thing that goes on the end. But anyway, I'll put that together later. I also got a vintage box fan, which obviously can't fit in this video. That'll be in a separate video some other time. And a couple other things. Uh, I got a metal halide floodlight, but that's out stored away. I got a lot of really neat things in this, this day. Uh, some fluorescent fixtures too, but this is all I have right here for right now. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video of my finds of the day for whatever date is in the title. Also, please comment, rate, and subscribe, and thank you very much for watching.